Galax, Galax CA. I don't even CA. know why you have that, but this is going to be the intro for no reason. Why do you have all these books in uh, f funny languages? I, I walked into a bookstore in Brooklyn, and they had uh, they had Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and then uh, the rest of the series, including um, uh, this one is uh, Golov uh, Golok. I'm going to get yelled at. Anyway, it's the rest of the series. It's all the rest of the four books, but it's like the thickness of this is ridiculous. Oh wait, I know that one. That one's Artur Artura Denta. Uh -huh. Arthur Dent, which is Arthur Dent. But that's right. about the extent of my Russian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this thing uh, started out here with a question for Wendell. As a matter of fact, it's it's my inbox question to you, Wendell. I know you're eligible for Google Glass. Are you gonna grab the thing? I don't know. It's so hard. And see, <laughs> to answer this question, you have to understand my own personal psychology. So it's like on the office tour, you guys saw this. This is my, it's an HP 100LX, it's DOS Palm Top, runs forever on two AA batteries. The story for this is, so I grew up really, really poor, and uh, I, I worked in a, in, in, it was a thrift store, and I did appliance repair when I was like 12 and 13, and... Wait, um, man, you were working at 12 and 13? Yeah, well... They don't even the care first, in Eastern Kentucky, right? No, no, Child they don't, labor, really they don't care. care. No, it's not really. Well, it was kind of a summer thing. I mean, my first job with computer stuff was actually when I was 13, and the guy was like, I don't know how we're going to pay you. And I was like, that's cool. Just give me old junk. So I got <laughs> yeah. a lot of old junk and you know, a lot, a lot of on, cash transactions. <laughs> before you go on, I, actually, I also had a job in eastern Kentucky uh, when I was way underage. Like, I couldn't work. And, and the, the manager at the place I was working made me sign a contract on a napkin stating that I would not sue them if the government found out that I was working <laughs> at a very young age. I don't think they understand because, you know, there's, there are a lot of small family farms in eastern Kentucky. And so, like, repairing old appliances and junk and, and you know, like, uh, washing machines and televisions and whatnot was much better than working on the farm and carrying around potatoes and cinder blocks and God knows what else. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go on with your, uh, your story here. So it's like this thing, this thing is amazing. And, like, I would have never, like, the junk store happened to get one of these things. And I fixed it. It was it was just a software problem. And then it was like, holy crap, I'll work all summer if you let me have this. And the guy was like, yeah, that's fine. And this thing is amazing. It completely transformed my life. I carried it from when I was a freshman, before I was a freshman in high school, till I graduated from college. And I kept trying to replace it with something better. Because, you know, the wheel of technology moves on. Right. This thing's a 186 with DOS, you know, this era, Windows era. And it's so, like, this is the next model up. This is a 320LX. This thing runs Windows CE instead of DOS. This thing was a complete turd, and I've said that for months. <laughs> That's because well, you need DOS. It's running right. Windows CE. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's running, it's, it is running Windows CE, and so I was like, damn it. So I got burned pretty bad with that one. And then you know I what bought, the CE stands for, right? Yeah, crap electronics. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got this. This is a uh, Sharp Zarus SLC 860. This thing has a retina display. This is from even way before the iPhone and everything. I got this about halfway through college, and I was like, this will replace my palm top. And it almost did because it runs Linux. But it still wasn't quite as good as the DOS palm top. It was just slow and clumsy to use, and the touch screen wasn't as good as using the shortcut keys on my palm top. And so I spent an insane amount of time writing software for this and trying to make it amazing. I mean, it even, like, it'll do the screen conversion thing and then it'll close like that so you can use it, you know, like a handheld or it's got a full keyboard. And it's a really cool piece of technology. I had to import this from Japan. It never actually came out of America. So I had it shipped here from Japan. And Good so it's Lord. like, that wasn't really very transformative. It wasn't, it was nowhere near as cool as this. And so like if Google Glass is this, I will happily pay $1,500 for it. But if Google Glass is Windows CE, it's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. So I don't know. I don't know. I want to know what the audience thinks about this. Should Windows get it? And why should he get it? And do you think that it will be an important piece of transformative technology in the comments? On our website, let's start because yeah, I'm, I'm going to kind of be ignoring the YouTube comments. Now that we have 200,000 <laughs> members, I've noticed the comments have been kind of ridiculous lately. Like, for instance, we'll make a video, and then someone will go in there. It's like everyone wants to share how nerdy they are. And I'm going to go ahead and say a couple things really quick before we really get into this video about the current state of nerddom. Guys, we know you're nerds, and we know a lot of you guys are smart. There's no reason to try to sound smart in the comments, because most of the times you're going to sound like an idiot, because your goal is to, to sound smart. Watch the video and comment on something in the video. Don't just come and try to share your knowledge. We don't care. It's, uh, it's off topic. Um, and I'm saying this a lot of times because a lot of people are showing up in the video for like the DX story thing and they're recommending 
their favorite, you know, like capture to the hard drive type thing. Like, oh, this thing's better. You, I'm disappointed in you, Logan. This program can copy to my hard drive better. The video is not even about that. It's about streaming. So watch the freaking video before you open your mouth and make yourself sound like an idiot while you're still trying to sound smart. And if you're really smart, go to our website because that's where I will be really focusing my attention. All right, you guys ready for the first actual question here? Yes. Well, I, w I would throw in oh. that the YouTube Wait, commenting on. system is really, really broken because uh, uh, it doesn't even handle like upvotes right. We used to have, you know, somebody would say something intelligent and then it would be upvoted a thousand times. And that doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Well, it seems like right now it seems to be based upon the replies. Like whichever comment gets the most replies goes to the top because, hey, everybody's talking about this comment. Well, that's usually someone going like, you know, we, we, we make a video, a video about like, you know, an Intel CPU and in the comments, some idiot decides to start a war on AMD versus NVIDIA, not even about Intel, just AMD. For, and, then, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, shut up, go away, stop trolling. And he gets a hundred comments of everyone telling him to shut up and die. And that raises to the top, <laughs> that rises to the top. I should say raises. I'm starting to turn into a YouTube commenter <laughs> that rises <laughs> to the top. <laughs> so yeah, it is a freaking mess. Go to our website. We are redoing the comment system. We're going to redo a lot of things on the website and we've got some ways for you guys to support. And we're trying to build the ultimate nerd community so that we don't have to be reliant upon third party nonsense like, you know, Google and Amazon and all these major companies like Facebook. We want to be self-reliant and we want to build a, a safe, cool place for you guys to hang out. And that's what we're trying to do right now. So anyway, speaking of that, let's go to the first question. This one is from Betax or is it Beta X? I don't know. Beta X64, it's Beta X64, of course. I should have read the whole thing before I opened my mouth. And it's, he just says, so the uh, channel has reached 200,000 subscribers. So he wants to know, I'm just, it's on the screen so you guys can see. Um, he wants to know if we're going to be doing any special things for this. Um, we, we hit 200,000, holy crap. I'm having a beer, that's what I'm doing for special things. Um, I, think, I think we should make a video that would just take all of these really stupid flame comments and we act them out. <laughs> Wait, no, did you see that video earlier that I sent you? Of the guys uh, acting no, out the comments? I no, I didn't see that yet. All right, well, you should watch it later. But yeah, we should, we should do that. We should actually, no, I don't want to encourage people. We may do something, but secret. I'm not going to tell people what we're going to do because then they'll all be encouraged to do that activity to generate a video. No, what I see. It'll, it'll yeah, turn yeah. into another list that we have to, like, uh, what was that? There was, this, there was a petition or something, and it was, it was a mess. Oh, the banana thing. Yeah. The banana fight video. Everyone, everybody wants us to have a banana fight. I think that was no. your fault, Wendell. I think it was. I, I, I do believe that was my bad. In one of the videos, I was like, I'm not prepared for this. And your comment was like, oh, we could throw bananas at each other. And I bet people would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and now everyone, they started a petition for a banana fight video. I think it had 600,000. And 600, now it's going to come back from the dead unless we remember to edit this out. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it in. Just I, I want to watch what happens. I mean, just because they, <laughs> just, that's the funny thing about change.org. You can petition until you're blue in the face. That doesn't mean we have to do anything. I mean, it's, 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 it's change.org. I mean, it's like... We kind of like the self-created schadenfreude of just, it's like, yeah, you made that. No, what now? What now? Your <laughs> passive-aggressive, uh, you know, petition. Yeah, what, what two, now? Two million signatures to make the government go away. Okay, well, good. You've got a lot of signatures, so good. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're still here. Uh, yeah. What the hell is up with this freaking bear? Um, how can you say no to that? <laughs> If that thing came, if, if, if myself as a bear, this is something from my nightmares right here. This is nightmare fuel all the Okay. Um, I'm more fascinated by the fact that somebody actually went and found this image of you to superimpose in the bear. I mean, that's... Yeah, where did that image come think, from? That's ridiculous. That's my question. It's like, did they find a video and just cut, like, 1080p and cut your face out and bam, put it on the bear? In which case, they spent a lot of time scanning through the videos to find that <laughs> one frame. You know when what? You're the, making this face. The rule of the internet. Congratulations, some, you dedicated individual. Uh, the rule, of the, the rule of the internet. Someone somewhere is getting off to that, and that really disturbs me. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> Thank you for putting that in my head. <laughs> Start. I didn't even. I just. I don't even. <laughs> oh no! I reinstalled Chrome, and I haven't. Uh, I haven't disabled AdBlock on our own damn website. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, guys, thank you guys so much for disabling AdBlock. It's it's super helpful, but we have some other ways to help coming up soon. Uh, this one's from Star Wars Guy 99. Star Wars Guy, do you like Star Wars? Okay, good. 
Fantastic. He wants to know um, about Black Friday. He said, I was browsing web about Black Friday because we don't have this where I live. You must live in a civilized part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and he found this article in the LA Times where you know people are killing each other and that sort of thing. But the article in the LA Times says that Black Friday is actually not the best day for the best deals. It's the day when everyone gets all excited and then they rip you off. So he wants to know, like, just is this true? I guess the only reason, only reason I'm even bringing this up is right now, you know, it's probably going to be Black Friday when this video comes out. Consumers so, make poor decisions when they're under duress, and that is most obvious on Black Friday. Yeah. That's a quote from the middle of this article. I, I don't remember if it was Black Friday or not, but there's a, there, we had a special project, and in order to do the special project, we had to procure an iPad on launch day. I don't remember if that was Black Friday or not, but... I actually had to do that, and I never ever want to do that again. And you mean that was you just... went? You didn't? You didn't send somebody? You went yourself to go get a uh, an iPad on launch day? Yeah, it was like a Saturday. It was it was a project for the Sci Fi Channel. Okay, so it was kind of oh, a big okay. deal. Yeah, yeah. But it was like I had to go get a, the thing, and and it was like a launch day thing, and they, they it was cool. Like they were gonna like they made it happen. I just had to go get it. It was so you. It wasn't. It was. Yeah. It ever, was like, where'd you have to go? Like Lexington or something? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, and so you and every it, hipster in Le Lexington in line. It must have looked. It funny. was bad. It was it was real bad. I, I never like I you know Amazon foul bachelor frog. I order my clothes online, kind of thing. Yeah, I don't even. I, I hate people. Okay, so <laughs> if this kind of thing situation ever happens again, I say we just go and make a video of that whole entire event. You know, I I think it's kind of fun. Black Friday's fun. I'm, I might actually go out this Black Friday just to get free mosh pits. And I'm just gonna stand there and just I'm not I'm not gonna run I'm not gonna run into the store I'm gonna run against the crowd and just like mosh you know and see what happens. I, I did yeah. see an article that made no sense to me about um, like people were in line for the Xbox One and Microsoft was frowning upon the, them also buying Mario like the Super Mario 3D World or whatever came yeah, yeah. out for the Wii, and so Microsoft was like no you you gotta buy the Xbox One and they're like but Super Mario so I don't. You know Super, Mario, know, Super Mario is supposed to be a, a system seller for, for Nintendo. I mean, I've read some reviews because I do like Nintendo's first-party titles. As anti-console as I am, I'm more. I'm not exactly anti-game. Like, <laughs> I, I, I like a lot of games. I'm anti the philosophy of the console in general, but I do like a lot of the first-party Nintendo games, and you guys may see me on Twitch playing some games with my uh, Wii emulator, but I'm very curious about the new Mario game. And that's I'm pretty sure... Thing I'm pretty sure that the author for the Hunger Games came up with the idea after having gone through Black Friday somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so he says, is this true? Yes. <laughs> That's, that, that could have been our... <laughs> Just to summarize, yes, yes, it's very yeah. bad. I think that's the most yeah. succinct thing you've ever said. <laughs> and it's so appropriate, though. I think we've covered everything. <laughs> yeah, let's move right along then. Uh, someone wants um, the tours of our complex, and um, I'm going to... Listen, everyone's asking 10 times a day, when are they going to get the tour of the forest location? And the answer is, when we're ready. So stop asking, because it'll be out whenever we're ready. And all we really need to do is, is, is sweep the floor. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah. Another question at Logan. So Wendell has his ultimate uh, tank nerd cave. Okay, he just wants to know why I'm in a forest. Um, I don't know. Why are you living in a city? Why does it, I like the forest. Do you like the city? It's like live wherever you like to live. And the thing is, is that I, I work primarily from uh, the Internet. And I do... You know, the YouTube is not the primary primary source of income, but there's a lot of other things I do with Tech Syndicate. And um, doing that, I don't have to live in the middle of a city. I can get a much nicer place at a lower cost outside of a city. So some people, someone else, like, kind of got my goat. Is that an old phrase? But I guess I could use that. Somebody else got my goat when they said that, like, oh, he's clearly doing really well off of all you idiots on YouTube that are, you know, allowing him to live in a nice place. I'm like, this place costs one-third as much as my place in New York, but the fact that it's outside the city means that it costs one-third as, you know, as much. So I can live wherever I want. I wanted to live in the, in the middle of the woods, and that's my response for that. I'm not even really sure it should be about that. I mean, that that to me is completely immaterial and irrelevant. You know, in college, I spent a lot of time in um, D.C. and Rochester and Buffalo and Albuquerque and Seattle and a whole bunch of other cities, and I was like, Yes, city is going to be awesome. And I spent time there, and I was like, wow, these, these really... The only city I could actually see myself living in maybe was Seattle. Yes, Seattle was awesome. 
Yeah, Seattle's nice. And it's just because with Seattle, Seattle's not really a city in the traditional sense. It has ridiculous urban sprawl, and it has all these little fiefdoms, and that makes it more tolerable somehow. Yeah, well, I mean, you're also kind of in the nature. You're in the nature. The mass transit system is kind of a turd, though. Except <laughs> yeah. The bus system is, is really what they have, and that's about it. If you want mass transit, yeah. you got to go to Tokyo, but um, I, I guess New York's not bad. Uh, the, well, mass transit here is... Uh, it's one of the better ones in the world, as I'm told by several people, but everyone's going to disagree with me. Um, but it's and it's it's just a confusion on how and when trains come. But it's 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 nice. Well, you know, every, um, everybody hates everything wherever they live. You know, like if you ask someone in New York how the transit is, they're like, "I had to wait ten minutes and my soup got soggy." What? <laughs> Did I just say soup got soggy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's was, everyone loves to complain. I was a guest lecturer in D.C. and. Um, I was very impressed by the mass transit system. I, there was a bunch of places I wanted to go, and I was able to get from anywhere to anywhere in about 20 minutes. And it wasn't overly crowded. Yeah, it seemed nice. It was a little confusing getting your ticket when we were down there. I'm like, uh, hit this button, put money in, hit this button. And it's not very clear that that's what you have to do. And then it's how much money do you have to put in to get just one way ticket? It made, it made less sense to me than the New York City Metro. I mean, even even the uh, the London Metro, or the, the tube in London, as they call it, uh, it was the more uh, conducive to, to this is how you get your ticket. You walk up, you get your Oyster card, you put money on it, you tap in, you tap out, done. Even when I went to, I was in Melbourne, Australia, that uh, that train rail down there was pretty nice. When you when you were in Melbourne, did they say Melbourne or Melbourne or Melbourne? Over okay, there? you have to kind of slow, you have to, you have to slur your voice to where you're living in, when you're living in Melbourne, uh, you you sound like you're from there, or when you're from there, the the way they speak, it's not that they're saying Melbourne, it's that they're saying Melbourne, but the R it gets slurred out. Melbourne. Um, but while I was All there, right. when I'm listening to everybody talk, I could hear it in their voice. I could hear the R, but it's just it's the manner of the the accent of of that region. So I started saying Melbourne, you know, and it and and the faster I said it, the more more Australia like that I kind of said it. It was just it. it um, <laughs> I got. Which I, I saw this. I got hate mail. Someone like wrote, wrote me an email from from uh, you know Australia, and he was like, "Dude, just say Melbourne," and he spelled out Melbourne. He's like, "Just say that when you're saying it." So yeah. <laughs> but when, when when you when you say Melbourne, mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like what I was hearing when I was down there. Uh, well, I heard. I guess I need to go I, down I there. Hear, I didn't hear Melbourne or Melbourne, but it's Melbourne, and it's <laughs> it's there, but it's just this slurred R. I mean, it's 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 almost like. I would say it's a silent R, but it's not. It's it's just very, very subtle. Uh, by the way, if you're just joining us on the inbox, you know, like if you're on the internet and you just joined in the middle of the video, like it was a radio program, <laughs> on this show, we, we answer questions from the audience and we joke around and we have fun. It's a time to hang out with you guys. Sometimes it's about hardware and sometimes it's about how the hell to say Melbourne. Melbourne. Mel Mel Melbourne. Yeah, all right, let's Melbourne. look at the next question here. This is from Hexa with three X's. I wrote you an email today, dude, and as soon as I click send, I realized that I only put two X's in your name, and there are three. And I was like, I, I well, I crawled under the floor, into the floor, and curled up into the fetal position like I was in an independent film. And then a clown curl, cuddled with me and cried. It was, it, well, I think it was an independent film. Um, I think we've got the winner for the Cannes Film Festival this year. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need, we need to start our own call, the Cannes Not. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad okay um he's he's got a long letter here with suggestions on, on ways that people can support ways that he can support uh he's got some really interesting options here um that we should probably consider like if someone donates 30 bucks to give them a, a mug or a pen and i think it would be kind of a cool idea to uh, allow someone to uh, select a reward if they donate I, I don't mind giving back to the community i mean hell i think that's a cool idea um so I guess we'll look into some ways to do that, but we do have some stuff in the works that may be alive almost by the time this video comes out. And if you go to, can we, can we tell them about tech support, Wendell? What do you think? Yeah, so let's go ahead and tell them about that because it's technically already launched, but not really, sort of, kind of. All right, if you go to the website now, it's probably not finished yet, but we have a, a section on the website. Just go to techsyndicate.com slash tech support, T-E-K, tech support. Oh yeah, I, I, I need to spell this thing correctly, don't I? <laughs> might help just a little bit I, I as my my angle. as my my college instructor used to say he goes you were always one character away from disaster <laughs> well yeah when you're programming exactly 
Well, when you're programming, when you're on the command line, when you're typing in a web address, because the moment you spell something wrong, you land at a porn site. And you're like, whoa, this isn't what I wanted. Hi, company. Why is everybody looking at my screen at this exact minute? <laughs> you know, I, I, made a, I made a website for a client back when I was uh, up in New York, and uh, they, they wanted a web domain that was something.net, right? And uh, I forget what the website was exactly, but that's irrelevant. The, the point is that .com was a porn site. And they did not know this. And I was like, how did, I, I didn't pay any attention to it. I just made their website. I did it like, they had like no money. So I did it in, an, in like an afternoon. And I was like, here's your crappy website. And you know, it was like 300 bucks and it was done. And then, you know, the next thing I know, they're calling me like, dude, did you know that .com was, I was like, nope. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I remember reading about the, the ultimate one that I saw on the internet was kidsexchange.com. <laughs> Not while I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyway, we do take Bitcoins. We do have some, some ways that you guys can give back. And this is one of the coolest things that you guys can do, uh, especially right now since it's the Christmas season. A lot of you guys are going to be shopping online. There are some extensions for Amazon, for Chrome and Firefox. And uh, what it'll do is it'll allow you to put in our affiliate code, which is TechSend-20 for the USA, and then the other ones are right here on the website. But you guys can actually put in these affiliate codes um, into the plugin, and then whenever you're on Amazon and you make a purchase, it will give our affiliate code credit, and we'll make a few pennies. And that will, I mean, like, you don't understand how much that can actually help us. Like, more than YouTube and all that stuff, that really can help us a lot. Um, because the, the more you sell on Amazon, the more Amazon gets back to you. Um, and I know some of the guys in the forum were complaining that Amazon work conditions are tough. Did you guys see that article on the, on the website? The Amazon work conditions or the workers' conditions are pretty tough? I would not surprise that, as Jeff Bezos is referred to as the Dread Pirate Bezos. It's an interesting video. Um, it was, it's, in, it's from the BBC. They, they put a hidden camera on some guy. Uh, and, you know, a lot of it seems like, like a white guy whining because he's doing jobs that white guys normally don't do. Like, he's like, I walk six hours today. I have a blister. And I'm tired. So, I mean, it was a little complainy, but I did watch the video and I do agree with a lot of the points in it, but I can't even imagine what it would be like if, you know, Amazon were working in China or whatever. You know, if it was like a Chinese factory, it would be like the conditions there are so much worse than the conditions in the Amazon factories. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not to say the conditions are good, but, you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, back to uh, giving back to the website. If you guys are looking for game deals, there are links to our game deal things. And uh, we do have a subscription system coming up right about now. So check that out. I'll be mentioning that on the text, so I'll, I'll cut it short for now. But there's a lot you guys can do to give back to the site, and we are going to be putting a lot of that back into the site to make it a better place to hang out so we don't have to worry about Google Plus and all that nonsense on YouTube. All right, what do we have next here on, this, on the uh, thing? Oh, this is a quick one. Um, this is from Storm King. I K K I Icky Storm King Icky. All right. Where did you find the rubber mat like the one on your desk, Logan? I went to the hardware store and I said, "Hey, give me a rubber mat." The guy went and found a big, nice roll of rubber mat stuff. He unrolled me a bit, cut it with like a pair of fancy scissors, and then charged me twelve bucks, and I went on my way. Just go to your local hardware store and say, well, "Give me a rubber mat." All right. Cool. Yeah. I want one of those. <laughs> it's really easy to do. Just go and get one. Just walk out of your door and say, "I'm going to go get one." Make that your purpose, and you will have one. I uh, don't know if I want to answer this question or not from Skullabess. He says, um, what's a dirty word that... What, what's something that sounds dirty but isn't? Post a word. Uh, Vista. <laughs> Vista. <laughs> All right, Kane, what do you got? You got a dirty word that sounds... Uh, a word that sounds dirty but isn't? Kumquat. <laughs> Kumquat. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything. I mean, everything sounds dirty to the right mind, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> like cucumber? Like basketball practice, you know what I mean? You guys want to go downstairs for some basketball practice? <laughs> I mean, you can say anything. I yeah. believe you have my stapler. <laughs> you want to come over and give it back later? Give me back my stapler? If you know what I mean, and just if you say "I know what I mean" at the end of any sentence, it makes it really dirty. <laughs> say no more. Say no more. <laughs> oh man, uh, I want to go watch the Dolphin Show later on at this at Sea World. If you know what I mean, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> she had a thing for the dolphins. I don't know. Uh, the Miami Dolphins. If you know what I mean. 
Kane just tuned out. <laughs> I'm I'm already on to the next question because I can't remember the name of the software that I was thinking of, and it's annoying the piss out of me. Uh, from oh, Albino Zebra. Yeah. Or, or White Horse, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> best audio editing software for PCs. He's looking for something good, but simple audio audio um, software to edit music. Mainly uses his game for uh, his rig for gaming. So I'm not even going to read the questions anymore. They're all here on the screen. So he wants to know, is there any recommendations for audio editing? Okay, first off, I need, I've got a question for you, and you can post it back here. Maybe I'll go and help you. But what kind of audio editing are you doing? Are you recording like instruments? Do you need to record several instruments at the same time? Or are you doing different tracks, like one track with just guitar, and then you're going to record again um, with the drums or whatever? If you're just like making a beat, a good place to start is FL Studio. Or if you want to step up from that, you can use Cubase, but that's going to be quite a bit more expensive. Um, and then, I mean, Audacity is quick and easy and fun, and you can do a few things with Audacity. But a step up from that would be Adobe Audition. And uh, that's a pay program that comes with a Creative Suite. So check that out. Check that one out. Um, the other program that's nice is Pro Tools, but, I mean, it all depends on what you're doing. There's so many different programs. I mean, there's even Finale if you want to write scores and stuff. So, yeah, I guess we'll, uh, if, uh, Kane, if you remember that one, let me know. I will. Uh, uh, okay, this is a good question here. Um, LAN party. Hi, Logan, and you other people. That sounds bad. You guys are just other people? That's terrible. <laughs> I like being yeah. an other person. <laughs> it means you're less responsible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just glad because then he did, it just means he didn't spell names wrong or anything. Oh, yeah, it's going to be C-Q-I-E-I-E-R-A-N. That's your name now. Yes. It's like, just, just throw any random thing of letters together, and that's Kane all of a sudden. <laughs> like, one out of 70 spells his name right. Anyway, uh, I'm hosting a LAN party for about 30 people, and I had a few questions. Um, number one, what will I need network uh, networking-wise? Number two, what snacks do you recommend? Number three, number three, best LAN party games. Number four, any other tips for an enjoyable experience? P.S. Logan. If you do not respond to this, I will put seven raccoons in your fridge, and uh, they will be very hungry. Okay, I really do not need any raccoons in my fridge. I've already got two, and I'm not sure where the other seven would go. Um, what do you need networking-wise? Well, of course you want one thing for them to get connected to the Internet, but all you really need is a nice big switch. I was going to say that you can probably get a kick-ass used commercial-grade 10100 switch on eBay, like a 24 or 48 port. Probably 48 port if you're really going to have 30 people. Yeah, really. On eBay for a song, and that would be amazing. That and a ton of, of uh, ready-to-go cables and all lengths, shapes, and sizes. That would be amazing. Yeah, you, you said 10100. Well, actually, I like to say that. Hmm? You said 10100, right? 10100 for... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably fine, fine for, for gaming LAN. and whatnot. Oh, yeah, fine for a LAN party. No, absolutely. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's fine for LAN. I mean, if you're doing a lot of file sharing, you can get somebody to... And because it's a Switch, it's not going to, like, eat up all the bandwidth on the Switch, but... Uh, Gigabit I mean, would be better, but you can find a 48 port 10100 on eBay for probably 50 bucks. Yeah. Done. That's and your good. internet connection is not that fast anyway. Exactly. Sadly um, or tellingly, depending on your perspective. Snacks, I would, I would recommend a large quantity of habaneros and some ghost peppers. <laughs> yeah, no one's going to snack on that. Um, I would. I, I yeah. would say that you, you probably need, like, fruit, apples and bananas, trail mix, Chex mix, lots of good stuff to drink, like every form of everything in diet and not diet formats. You got to think about this. If you get, like, junk food, people are going to get tired quicker. That's just the way it, I mean, if you had, like, a bunch of Snickers bars laying around, people are going to eat them, and they're going to like them, and then, like, two hours later, they're going to have a sugar crash. So, um, Fruit and trail mix. Trail mix is really good for endurance. Yeah, trail mix. What, what else is good for, like, the mind? Something full, something full of vitamin B. I don't know. What's full of vitamin B? A crap load of trail mix because you get the nuts. Yeah. That'll help a What's lot. What's just protein, though? You know, juice is also loaded with sugar, too, um, almost as much as soda. So I, I drink water and beer, but that's me, and you drink the, the sodas. And then, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what else to drink for. Uh, how about this? Make, um, make some, like, uh, I'm getting all hippie now. Make, like, homemade soda. Yeah, do that. That'll homemade ice cream you could maybe do. That would be a lot of fun. Do what? Homemade ice cream. Yeah. I'm not sure if they're all. I'm not sure if they'll get into that kind of stuff if they're doing a little lamb party for 30 people. A big gigantic plate of vegetables that no one's probably going to touch, and the next day you're going to have a pile of broccoli and a pile of carrots left over. I <laughs> found the audio program. All right. I'm cut you guys off, but I found the audio program. What is it? It's called Ardour. A R D O U R, and it's record, edit, and mix. It's on Linux and OS 
and it's ardour.org, okay. A-R-D-O-U-R.org. All right. Um, and it's it's a full multi-track uh, recording suite. I've not heard of that. So if you're using Linux, that would be really nice. And I can't imagine you'd be using OS X. Yeah. Well, if you're already in audio production, you may very well be using OS X, which this is still free. So. Yeah. All right, let's move on down from snacks. I mean, we could, we could make a totally separate video just on snacks and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter what snacks I say. If I say fruit, someone's going to be like, that's that's a stupid idea. If we say nuts, someone's going to be like, everyone always knows better. So just look in the comments because people are so much smarter than us when it comes to all this kind of stuff. Yeah, um, 30 people, you got to think about venue too because unless you have a really big house, well, even if you have a really big house, you're only going to get five or six people in one area. And so with 30 people, it's like, you might get like eight or nine people in the garage and like four or five people in the kitchen and like five or six people in the basement and like a few people in the living room and you're going to be running a lot of cables so you're going to need a lot of tape to tape the cables down so people don't trip you know one of the coolest land parties that i went to um was somebody knew a guy that was friends with a guy that had a key to a church and the next thing you know we've got like you know it's it's you know it's, it's church churches ha happens on sunday and it happens on Wednesday, and if you're in the South, sometimes on Thursday and Friday or just whenever. So they went in there on a Friday night and played all day Friday night and all day Saturday, and nobody came in, and they packed up everything and left. So we were in, a, in the middle of a church with like 20 people, just eating pizza and hanging out and playing video games. And I don't the think anybody thing, ever knew that that happened. Speaking of the church, kind of reminded me of this, is the other thing you got to remember is you need power. Everybody needs power, so you want to make sure that you're not over subscribing your power onto one uh, one socket in your house otherwise you're going to blow a breaker when you plug 10 computers in. especially if you got people coming in with like 1000 watt app power supplies or whatever they're bringing along with them so you want to make sure that your power distribution is is spread out across all of your uh, all of your outlets yeah you got <laughs> low, you, low if, fuse. If, if it's an older house <laughs> you're probably going to accidentally burn the house down <laughs> <laughs> that's also possible so buy marshmallows for that yes <laughs> And, and chocolate. You know, you know, Kane, we might, maybe, we should, maybe we're big enough now to talk to Mike finally and actually do a, a, a Tech Syndicate style land party. I, you got to remember, man, I've got all of that stuff in my head. Everything we talked about back then, I've got Good. it all in my brain. All right, well, that may be upcoming, some some land parties. I'm just not sure what we'll do them. I've always wanted to do one in Cincinnati just so we could call it Land Cincinnati, but that's the only reason I want to do it in Cincinnati. <laughs> 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 it's not. It's not a bad. It's not a bad. I mean, it's not a bad area. I mean, it's no. it's kind of centralized. It's not exactly the worst place, or it's not the best place either. But we probably get more people there than we would in New York City. Everyone up in New York City is too busy not going to land parties. There's too well, there you many, go. Actually, too many things to do up in New York. You know, that's something they should uh, they should put in the uh, on text and go to text and get and put in the comments and say, hey, would you guys go? To, or maybe we can get like a poll or something. Yeah, where should we central. do our land party? Can we do something like that? Can we get a poll and put like? Uh, we have polls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, just put like a list of cities that we are kind of centralized to certain regions of the country. Would you go to a LAN party if we did one here? All right, uh, number three, the best LAN games to play. Uh, my vote is always Half-Life 1 multiplayer. I love that, but that's usually after you play a few other games, you know, and, and then you want to just like hang out and scream and yell, so just put on Half-Life 1 multiplayer. Um, let's see, Wendell, what's your favorite uh, LAN game for LAN party? Hmm. Man, that's rough. Cause you got, I mean, you can you can have some quick, easy games, and I mean, you know, first-person shooters, multiplayer, it's that's always sort of good to break up the monotony. You can do some strategy games like you know Warcraft Three or Starcraft Two are pretty good for land play. Um, but I mean, there's you really you, you sort of have to work that out with the crowd ahead of time. Like you you ought to get a mailing list and just email everybody and find out what fits because you know my crowd would really like playing Unreal Tournament Three, but you know, some crowds will be like, man, that's way too old school. Yeah. Uh, um, Soldat. Just just Soldat. Google Soldat. S-O-L-D-A-T. I'll leave it with that. And Kane, what do you think? Um, well, I mean, I'm just thinking that you've got 30 people, you know, land for 30 people. What kind of games can handle everybody in the same game? You're probably um, going to have to have um, different, like, yeah, you probably should be running a strategy game and an FPS at the same time so that people can jump in and out of either one of those that they want to. That, that exactly. would be my recommendation. Um, yeah, so I mean, you always, you've always got games like like StarCraft, StarCraft Two, uh, Warcraft, uh, Unreal Tournament, Half Life. Um, you can get a Battlefield because Battlefield can get every you know one of the old. I don't remember which Battlefield holds up. It's like what sixty four players. I know nineteen forty two did, I believe, but I, I haven't played uh, many since then. I played uh, what was the twenty one something, twenty one forty two or something. I don't remember. 
Yeah, I one played of those, that one. I, mean, I haven't really played much since. I've got Battlefield Three, but it was like yeah, it's not my cup of tea. I'm more of a corridor shooter than like a, you know, sprawling battlefield with airplanes and stuff. It's fun, yeah. but I'd rather have a corridor like in Quake. Well, uh, the newer no. the newer yeah. Unreal tournament games could handle all thirty people, and you could do like a capture the flag type thing with vehicles. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that actually would be so, a lot yeah. of fun. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Um, what um, are the game? What's what's the game with the destructible things where you're on Mars? Um, uh, Red Faction. Yes, Red Faction. The original Red Faction is the best. That game one. is amazing. Play the original Red Faction. Everyone will be very happy with that game. It's one of the best. Um, uh, you guys may have some fun with like uh, different mods for the Source engine, uh, like Goldeneye Source, like Hidden, um, or even Trouble in Terrorist Town is a mod for Gary's mod. So it's a mod for a mod. I don't even know. But yeah, check out that one as well. And um, Team Fortress 2. Fun. Yeah, you could always play Team Fortress 2, but Team um, Fortress 1 maybe, I don't know. If you're Again, if you're into strategy games, uh, Dawn of War. Um, isn't Sins of the Solar Empire a pretty... Is that, is that I forget how big that is. You know, you know something? Now that you mentioned strategy games, you and I had a lot of fun the other day playing... Um, well, it was kind of fun. We needed to fix a few issues with open broadcast and all that stuff, but uh, we were playing XCOM, the new one, Enemy Unknown. You could probably have but a little it's... tournament with that. Like, yeah, because you know, like... that, one's, that one's limited to two people. Yeah, but um... you could have a tournament. Oh, absolutely. So, like, well, everyone else can be playing something else and be like, hey, it's your turn with the tournament. And then, like, whoever wins gets a pumpkin pie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how, how long did we play that? I think that, that match lasted, like, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Probably less than that, actually, but yeah, it was it was fast. It was I mean, like speed yeah. chess, but more intense. It was, and it, and we had a forty-five second round limit. I think that's what made it really, really fast. If we had a hundred twenty second, it would last a little bit longer. But we, we had a forty-five make it 120 second round limit. Second. I, the the strategy wasn't there. Yeah, I know. It was just like we get like one guy moved, we would rotate the camera, and, and so yeah, that's things to take into consideration. And it's also like I said, if you have thirty people, you're gonna have a lot of different gaming styles, a lot of different people who are playing different kind of things. I mean, for for. I don't know. You might end up with a, a couple people playing Quake Live. You get half your guys playing a Quake Live match. I mean, I have no idea. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of games out there to play. Yeah. All right, I think I'm going to cut this uh, inbox off right now, and we'll go on to the next inbox video. We're going to make several inbox videos, but you guys have to watch these when we release them. <laughs> That's how we torture you guys. <laughs> that was awful. All right. Um, <laughs> so be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys for hanging out for the whole video and just it's, this is our, really our time to just lay back and hang out with you guys, unless we're streaming on Twitch. That's another time. So I'm trying to, you know, have more time with the audience. So it's, it's special yeah. to me, okay? All right, subscribe button's over there somewhere unless YouTube decides to move it. And I think there's a Google Plus thing and you have to do all these things. Just go to our website and join. That's the real fun. And you know what? The next contest that I do is probably going to be just on the website because I'm so through with Google and all this other social networking nonsense. At least yeah, I'm going to try to make it just on, you know, the website. We'll... I'll fight with any vendors that say otherwise. So, yeah. All right. We'll see you guys um, in whatever the next video that you watch is. Bye.